The Adventures of Sam Spade, Detective. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic, the non alcoholic hair tonic that contains lanolin. Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Detective Agency. Hey, it's me, hey, Sammy the Spade. Sam, Sam, it's not true, is it? Every word of it. What? That you've been consorting with unsavory characters? Well, uh, she was a savory enough girl, Effie, although a crook. Well, according to the paper, she's practically a murderess, not to mention that she's dancing the Roomba with you. That's a lie. There's a picture of you. Virginia Vale, gangland glamour girl, caught at the Club Eye Barrier in barefoot Roomba with private eye. It was not a Roomba. It was a bambuco. Da, 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 da. Oh, boom. Sam, not da, over da, the phone. Da, da, da. Boom, I can't stop it. Boom, 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 boom. Stay where you are. Boom, 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 boom. I'll be right down to dictate my report on the lawless caper. Boom, boom, boom. Dashiell Hammett, America's leading detective fiction writer and creator of Sam Spade, the hard-boiled private eye, and William Spear, radio's outstanding producer-director of mystery and crime drama, join their talents to make your hair stand on end with the adventures of Sam Spade. Presented by the makers of Wild Root Cream Oil for the hair. Say, have you gotten acquainted with Wild Root Cream Oil yet? Tell you what, mister, if you haven't, even if you don't use any hair tonic at all, why not ask at your drug or toilet goods counter tonight or tomorrow for the brand new 25-cent Get Acquainted bottle of Wild Root Cream Oil. You like the way Wild Root Cream Oil grooms your hair neatly and naturally, relieves dryness, and removes loose dandruff. You never dreamed one hair tonic could do so much. So give it a try. Get the generous new 25-cent bottle of Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. And now, with Howard Duff starring as Spade, Wild Root brings to the air the greatest private detective of them all in the adventures of Sam Spade. I think I'm getting it now. You even lost your shoes. Ready, sweetheart? Yes, Sam. Uh, no questions? No, Sam. That uh, picture in the paper doesn't mean a thing, Effie. There was nothing between Virginia and me. Just wasn't room. Well, uh, that bambuco, you know, that's the way we dance it. Authentic. Sam, I troubled to call my girlfriend, Edna Mae Schwartz, who is an instructor at Arthur Murray's. Mm -hmm. I quote, the partners exchange graceful nods in the center of the dance floor and then separate. Well, uh... As the senorita provocatively leads a pursuing caballero through a series of gay whirls, turns, and figures. There, you see, provocative. But he never catches her, Sam. Well, I had my shoes off. That gave me the advantage. Oh, you know best, Sam. Well, that clears that up. Uh, date? Uh, August 29th. I will give the date. Fill it in. That still doesn't explain you're operating on the wrong side of the law. Down, Effie. This goes to John M. Lawless. A known gangster. What else? From Samuel Spade, license number 137596. Boom. Thank you, Effie. Subject, uh, Joe Morales. Uh, dear Johnny. You, uh, hired me yesterday morning, but the real start of it was back in 45 flashback. San Francisco was just recovering from VJ Day, and crime was practically at a standstill, because your number one competitor in the West Coast mobs had just been rubbed out, and you were on trial for same. Nothing about the trial made any sense. The tea time chatter in the better pool rooms was that you were taking the rap for your worst enemy, Joe Morales. What made even less sense, the lawyer defending you was Joe's brother. So I wasn't a bit surprised to receive your check for $25, together with an invitation to be in the third row of the courtroom when the jury returned the verdict. I was. The defendant will please rise. <coughs> Step forward, please. <coughs> Have you anything to say why judgment of this court should not be passed upon you? Yeah. It's a bad beef. <coughs> the judgment of this court is that you, John Lawless, for the crime of manslaughter having feloniously run down, run over, and killed with a certain automobile the deceased person named in the indictment, and having subsequently departed the scene 
in violation of the hit and run statute, are hereby sentenced to a term of three to ten years in the state prison of the state of California. You didn't even look at the judge while he was dishing it out. Your eyes were on the man sitting directly in front of me. The man you were supposed to be taking the rap for. The man you had deliberately planted me behind, Joe Morales. I wondered what that meant. When the judge brought down his gavel, I found out. You came up the aisle with a deputy on one arm and your lawyer on the other. He seemed upset about something. I'm sorry, Johnny. I did the best I could. They've given me the judge I asked you for. You passed I... on the jury, you cheap shyster. Okay, just wait till you get my bill. Shut up. Oh, wait a minute, Sheriff. I want to speak to a friend. Hey, Johnny, hurry it. We got a train to catch. Hey, you, Joe. Yeah, Johnny? I got just this to say to you. I'm going up, but I'm not staying, see? If I'm not paroled out in three, I'll break out. Either way, I'll get you, even if it means a murder rap. Oh, now, listen, Johnny, you... You heard know... me, Spade? Yeah, Johnny, I wish I hadn't. Well, Johnny, we've got to go. Okay, okay. Don't forget what I said, Joe. So long, Sam. Good luck, Johnny. Hey, Sally. Yeah, Joe? You hear what he said? I know. He's going to knock me. Hey, this guy's a witness. Name is Spade. Spade, uh, my brother Sally. Salvador Morales. You may have heard of me. Yeah, if I'm ever up in a hit and run, remind me not to hire you. <laughs> Come along, Spade, where we can talk quietly. Just over here. My conference room. Look, uh, we got nothing to talk about. Oh, yes, we have. Watch it. I just got this suit press. Yeah, right in here. Oh. Sally, is it all over? How did it come out? Where were you? In here. I couldn't force myself to stay out there. What did he get? Three to ten. Three to ten? Is that... Oh, I mean, how terrible. How terrible. Best I could do. This is Sam Spade, my dear. This is Virginia Vale, Johnny Lawless's fiance. The San Quentin widow. Well, uh, how's drugs, Virginia? Why did they bring you here? Maybe they know. He's a witness. Witness? To a threat Johnny made against my brother's life. My own client. <laughs> What's funny? Ask your brother. That threat would even get you a writ against him to keep the peace. What do you mean, Sam? Uh, sweetheart, threats don't mean anything in law unless they're backed up by some action. Even if he told you the when, the where, and the how, it wouldn't be worth anything until you're dead. But it would be worth something then? Sure, it shows premeditation. Then if he knew he was overheard and you'd be forced to testify if anything happened to Joe... Hey, it... beautiful, what are you trying to do to me? Oh, I mean, he'd think twice before he tried anything. You'd be safe, Joe. Well, honey, I, uh, I didn't know you cared. About you, I don't. I just wouldn't want Johnny to do anything foolish. <laughs> End of flashback. That was uh, three years ago. A lot of big news has broken since then, but the only items that interested you in San Quentin were printed on the inside pages of the local press. Item. Virginia Vale, your fiancé, got herself engaged to Joe Morales, your worst enemy. And item. Salvador Sally Morales, your mouthpiece, had taken over your mob. Which brings us up to yesterday morning. Yeah? That you, Sam? Who's this? Johnny Lawless, remember me? No. I was hoping you'd say that. Look, Sam, I, I got a job for you. Call Peeper Breen. He may need it bad enough. I've got no contacts in the mobs anymore. This is clean. How clean? A chance to save an innocent man from the gas chamber. Well, There's I... There's a grand in it for you. Wait till I get a pencil. Now, uh, what was the address? The Alma Arms on Pine Street near Jones. Yeah? Buzz me three times. One long, two short. And make sure there's no one on your tail. Got it. I was not tailed. I found your name on the bell panel, buzzed one long and two short, and the automatic lock clicked me in. You were waiting, one flight up, in the open door of your apartment. You didn't say anything, just made sure it was me, motioned me inside, locked the door, and led me back to a bedroom. Well, there it is, Sam. Mm hmm. Joe Morales. Dead about three hours, I'd say. Four slugs, chest, shoulder, and head. Looks like amateur work, a professional aims for the belly, or did you mean it to look like an amateur job? Would I be sap enough to drop him in my own apartment? Besides, he's my lawyer's brother, and I might need Sally again. Why did you call me? Well, you heard what I said to Joe after the trial. Who told you that, Virginia? Yeah, but she didn't have to. Didn't I ask you to sit there? Well, that's one thing that worries me. Look, uh, let's go in the other room, huh? I feel like a drink. Well, here's my pitch, Sam. I checked out of San Quentin yesterday morning. I didn't have a mark against me. The warden himself put my case before the parole board. He called me the ideal prisoner. Shall we dance? Okay, Sam, okay. But a man can change a lot in three years. So can a woman. <laughs> Virginia met me at the gate and we drove into the city. We didn't have a thing to say to each other. The way I felt by the time the ride was over, Joe could have her and welcome. 
I had other plans. Such as? Well, the parole board was getting me a job with a mining firm, a, a surveyor. I took a course up at Quinton. You uh, seriously expect me to swallow this line of guff? Listen, you don't get fat making a living on the mace. Take half of these guys you hear telling the world what wonders they are at puffing boxes, knocking over joints, and the rest of the lays. Yeah, not half of them make three meals a day at it. Then what chance has a guy without a regular racket? And brother, that's me. I'll buy that for now. Let's uh, talk about that dead body. All right. Well, I, uh, I called Joe on the phone this morning, see, and I told him to meet me here at three this afternoon. I wanted to tell him, forget about what I said about how I was going to get him. Not that I wanted to write off that rap I took for him. But if he was scared, he might come gunning for me. I might have to break parole to defend myself. About Virginia, like I told you, we got nothing to talk about. Yeah, yeah, it was beautiful while it lasted. So he was due here at three, huh? Huh? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was held up. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was with my lawyer at the time. Sally? Yeah, I, uh, I phoned the building and uh, told the superintendent to let him, let Joe in, and then I got here about a quarter past four. But I didn't find him till just before six when I called you, Sam. How come? Well, I, I just didn't look in the bedroom. I figured he got uh, tired waiting and left, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. Well, look, uh, Johnny, assuming your story is true, and if it isn't, you ought to be ashamed of yourself, who do you think did it? Well, that depends on why. If it was somebody gunning for him, it would depend on what's going in the mob since I've been in Quinton. You know more about that than I do. If it was somebody trying to frame me... What do you mean, trying? Hey, wait a minute. I got a phone homicide. You must have known that when you called me. Yeah, that's why I ripped the wires out. That's cute. That's very cute. Oh, look. That makes you look real good. Look, look, Sam, look. I'm not asking you to do anything extracurricular. Sure, you have to yell cop, but you'll do it over a pay station downstairs. And by the time anybody can get back up here, that stiff will be out. It will. Well, how's that going to be done? I, uh, I got a friend in the undertaking business. Met him up at Quinton. He just installed a new crematorium. You should have called him first. I did, but I can call him off. You stir happy. Look, Sam, look, how about it, huh? So the cops come in tonight, tomorrow. Who cares? Not Joe, the weather he'll keep. What do you say, Sam? What do you say? I say you're probably bluffing, that you got no way of getting rid of the stiff, but on the outside chance that you might not be bluffing, I'll string along with you for a couple of hours. If I don't turn up anything by then, the deal is off. Okay, that's fair enough. Yeah, but this isn't... Hey! Sorry, I got to do it. No! Oh. I hated to do it, Johnny. You were out of condition and you weren't expecting it. But I wanted you to look like a hospital case. After you went down and out, I transferred my fee from your wallet to mine, examined your wounds, and decided you were good for two hours at St. Agnes Hospital, where I know the head nurse... Uh, incidentally, that reminds me. Uh, uh, so without further delay, I towed you downstairs, threw you into a taxi, and delivered you to the ambulance entrance. That's when I remembered that I had forgotten one thing. I hadn't given you a chance to call off your alleged undertaker friend. I was sure that that part of your story was bluff, but just to make sure, I rushed back to your apartment in less time than it takes the average undertaker to back his hearse out of the garage, I thought. When I got there, I wasn't so sure. The apartment had been tidied up, ashtrays emptied, glasses put away. They'd even vacuumed the rug. The blood-stained bedspread had been removed, and with it, the corpus delecti. I found myself humming an old tune. I ain't got no body. The makers of Wild Root Cream Oil are presenting the weekly Sunday adventure of Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, Sam Spade. Here's important news on good grooming. If you want the well-groomed look that helps you get ahead, socially and on the job, listen. Recently, thousands of people from coast to coast who bought Wild Root Cream Oil for the first time were asked, how does Wild Root Cream Oil compare with the hair tonic you previously used? The results were amazing. Better than four out of five who replied said they preferred Wild Root Cream Oil. Remember, non-alcoholic Wild Root Cream Oil contains lanolin. It grooms the hair naturally relieves dryness, and removes loose, ugly dandruff. So if you want your hair to be more attractive than ever before, get the generous new 25-cent size of Wild Root Cream Oil, America's leading hair tonic, on sale at all drug and toilet goods counters. 
It's also available in larger economy bottles and the handy new tube. Get Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. By the way, smart girls use Wild Root Cream Oil, too. And mothers say it's grand for training children's hair. And now, back to the lawless caper. Tonight's adventure with Sam Spade. In most murder cases, there are too many suspects, too many motives, and too many clues from the very beginning. I'd been on this one three hours, and I succeeded in turning up no suspects, no clues, and the most shameful thing of all, I had lost the body of the victim. I consoled myself with the thought that he was in no condition to tell me anything anyway. But then neither were you, Johnny. You'd uh, checked out of the hospital, no forwarding address. But in a gin mill down in the mission, I found a character with the unlikely name of Porky Grout. Uh, Porky is theoretically alive and will tell all he knows about anybody, which is plenty, but two fingers of rye. I gave him a handful. <coughs> uh, easy, uh, easy. Uh. Uh, the, uh, the Joe Morales smiled, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, they dusted this town. They moved to Las Vegas five, six months ago. Uh, how come uh, Joe stayed in San Francisco? Oh, uh, him and his brother had a beef with each other. That's uh, Sally Morales, the lawyer? Yeah, the mouthpiece. Uh, uh, not, not too close. <laughs> yeah, what was it all about? Oh, that dame, Virginia Vale. Yeah, after she and Joe framed Johnny Lawless on that hit-and-run job, well, they disagreed on methods of administration. <coughs> uh, not so close. Oh. So she and Sally team up. And Sally uses his business connections to pull off this big combine, you see? Yeah, I heard of it, Las Vegas. Uh, how do I get to Sally? <laughs> oh, my, my throat's dry. I can't hardly talk. Uh, hey, uh, Riley, put out the bottle. Uh, and bring an air wick. Yeah. Yeah, here we are. Yeah, that's right. Oop, <laughs> so Easy, easy, I'll help you. Uh, great, huh? Great stuff. Uh, not too close. Yeah. Uh, now, uh, when do you want to get to him? Tonight? Uh, right now. <clears throat> Let me see. The dame don't dance to nothing but rumba music, and she don't drink nothing but imported French champagne. Yeah, but yeah. Furthermore, she don't go nowhere where she don't get her picture taken, and he don't dare take a drink in a place that pays him protection. Well, this being after hours, there's only approximately one place they could be at. That's the Iberia out on Van Ness. <coughs> Uh, oh, uh, yeah. Thank you and good night, Porky Grout. If your friends won't tell you, I will. Uh, please don't bother to answer. I didn't have any trouble picking out that table. Virginia spotted me at about the same time, grabbed up her purse, muttered an excuse to her escort, and edged around the dance floor. She caught me in the middle of a bambuco, a combination of a rumba, a samba, and guarasha and whirled me lightly out onto the floor. I followed as best I could. Listen, you shouldn't have come here. Yeah, how did I know our first dance would be at Don Pucco? Oh, you danced divinely. Oh. But you must leave at once. Uh, Sally is insanely jealous, and he's in a especially bad mood tonight. Yeah, so am I. I know why you came. Yeah, you won up on me. Johnny Lawless has been in touch with you, hasn't he? You uh, talked to him since yesterday morning? No. He was bound to get in touch with you. Yeah. I don't know what story he's told you, but don't believe a word of it. He only wants to get you out of the way so he can get back at Joe. Joe thinks Joe framed him into San Quentin. Oh, you can stop worrying about Joe. Uh -huh. Sam, what are you... Oh, he's dead, if that's news to you. I... I think you'd better talk to Sally after all. Come on. Well, just getting the hang of it. Well, my dear. So you've met another old friend. Huh? Hello, Sally. Hello. Sit down, Spade. Thanks. Sally. Huh? Sam says Joe is dead. Joe? Murdered? Yeah. <sighs> well, it was bound to happen. I want him to get out of town before Johnny Lawless came back. Johnny says he was with you when it happened. <laughs> Joey's don't go for alibis, Spade. Best defense I could give him would be that I defend him despite the fact he's accused of killing my own brother. But look here. As his attorney, I have the right to know what he retained you for. To find out who did kill Joe. Yeah? That's what he said. Have you found out? Not yet. Any leads? Not many. Now, what's the difficulty? The corpse. 
Somebody swiped it. You can't mean that. I can, and I do. Well, that doesn't make sense. Unless Johnny arranged it himself. But he couldn't have. No contacts. Of course, he might have disposed of it without help. It's been done, you know. Not tonight. I'm his alibi there. I don't believe it. You're just telling that story to see how we'll react. That's why I'm telling it, but it's not a story. It's the McCoy. Sally, what can it mean? If Johnny didn't do it, then somebody must have done it to frame him. And if they did that, they wouldn't turn around and get rid of the evidence, would they? What? Well, the whole thing is wild, wild. You know, uh, there might have been two people who thought they were a team, but one of them was really working against the other and for Johnny. Huh? Well, that's absurd, isn't it, Sally? Is it, my dear? He's trying to play us off against each other. Don't fall for it, Sally. I had nothing to do with any of it. You've got to believe that. Yes, I was sure of you when Johnny was out of the way. You wanted him out of the way, you admit it. You're still in love with him, aren't you? Oh, aren't you? Allie, so you're hurting me. Hurting? Yes. I'll help the DA write his brief. He'll go to Tehachapi for body snatching. Go ahead. I can't wait to get on the stand. The things I'll tell about you, how you let Johnny go up on that hit and run when you knew it was my idea and I was in the car with Joe. Oh, you will. Not a jury in the country would blame me for protecting my own brother. Protecting him? You were framing him even then. So you can have me for yourself. Oh, I'll have you in the gas chamber if you keep insisting. Uh, Your own brother squeeze out of that one if you can. Uh, I can. The body? Love of woman surpasses brotherly love. <laughs> I can see the jury now, Edie, get up. Victim of a designing woman caught in the toilet. Why, you... Nuts, nuts. I don't care whether either of you is guilty or both or neither or whatever. If I get that body back tonight, I'll let the cops worry about it. If I don't, I'll confess to everything myself and name all three of you as accomplices. You... All right, all right, Spade. You say your only concern is that body. Right. Right. Here. Here's $500. Another 500 when you find it, huh? Does that convince you? Well, it helps. Here, my diamonds. Take them all. Now, no, keep the diamonds, Virginia. If Sally gets sent up first, you'll need them for your defense. Think it over, kids. I'm calling the cops right now. Uh, Roy, Sam Spade. Where's Dundee? Oh, he's asleep. Sam, I've been trying to reach you. Yeah, but do you know why? Why, sure, about Johnny Lawless. I... Is there something we don't know, Sam? Well, uh, I'll uh, come down and give you a statement. It's about Joe Morales. Well, what about him? Well, he got knocked off and uh, somebody lifted the corpse. Oh, Sam, nobody lifted it. Uh, well, then who did? We picked it up, Sam, right after you called us. Right after I... Oh, yeah. Yeah, what time was that? Uh, let's see, I got it here. Uh, 20 minutes past six. Lose your watch? That ain't all. What's that, Sam? Call you back. What's up, Sally? Come on, come out of there. Well, I wasn't planning to spend the night in a phone booth. Why the heater? It's for you, Sam. You must be nuts pulling a gun in a crowded joint like this. <laughs> hey, stop looking at it. Come on. Up those stairs. Now, look, sir. In there. Easy. Where's your girlfriend? Well, I... I sent her home, Sam. She can't stand the sight of blood. <laughs> you clown. Oh. <laughs> you were pretty funny, too, when you made that phone call. I didn't believe you'd go through with it. What makes you think I'm interested in that old rap? Johnny's already done the time for it. Joe can't talk, and I don't want to. I don't care what you want. It's what I want. That's what counts. Does it? You want it, Virginia? You got it. Oh, not the point. It just doesn't sound good. Salvador Morella's sweetheart going up on a murder rap. Well, you trimmed it down to manslaughter for Johnny Lawless, and she's enough prettier to rate an acquittal, or are we talking about the same killing? <laughs> you think Virginia killed Joe Morellas, don't you? Why? I... Because she seems so anxious to pin it on Johnny Lawless. Well? Well, nothing. Only I've got a score to settle with Johnny Lawless myself, you see. Uh... He uh, left me out in a limb with that body snatch. If I can pin the killing on him, I got a story for the cops. Now, show how smart you are. Shoot me. I fully intend to. Now, look. Well, hold it, Sally. Hello, Johnny. Hey, you can do it yourself, Johnny. I was going to do it for you, but you can I do it yourself. I don't get it. He's trying to pin that murder on you, Johnny. Like you pin that old hit and run on me? But it's not the same, Johnny. Joe's killing is worth life if you're lucky. I never had much luck. Let him have it, Johnny. What have you got to lose? Well, you want me to... No, no, no. Uh, step back, Sally. Okay. He dead? Yeah. You planned it different, didn't you, Johnny? Yeah. Yeah, but I might as well get two for the price of one. Yeah, I planned it different, but I don't seem to care anymore. Well, then you won't need that. Huh? 
Sorry, Johnny. By the way, I'd like to thank you for keeping me in the clear. How come? That phone call you made the homicide using my name. Without that, I might be going up with you. How'd you figure it? Nobody but you had anything to gain by making that body seem to disappear. You knew I wouldn't check with the police till I'd made a try at locating it on my own. You knew I'd use the disappearance as a handle to shake what I could out of Sally and Virginia. You knew they'd suspect each other because I had you alibied by the time of the body snatch, and that would start them screaming accusations at each other. Did they say enough to send them up? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how much will stick, but enough. They both admit Joe did that hit-and-run job I was sent up for? He and Virginia together. So she was with him. Three years ago, I wouldn't have wanted to know that. Now it sounds good. I didn't think it really sounded good to you. I was sorry to hear it myself, and after all, I'd only danced a bambuco with a mouse. I'm sorry things turned out the way they did, and it's a little late to be making with the advice, but, uh, well, you know, the best laid plans of mice and men gang after glade. The what? And, as you say, what chance has a man got without a regular racket? Period. End of report. Well, heavens to Betsy. Oh. How can you be so sympathetic with a girl who did all those terrible things? Oh, I know, F. I know. It's a silly dance, but she looked cute while she was doing it. I don't mean the dance. You mean the best laid plans? What does that mean, Sam? That gang after glade? I'll give you a hint, sweetheart. It's something you never need worry about. No. <laughs> Here's why, men. Here's why Wild Root Cream Oil is again and again the choice of men who put good grooming first. Wild Root Cream Oil grooms the hair neatly and naturally without giving it that plastered down look. Wild Root Cream Oil relieves annoying dryness and removes that loose, ugly dandruff. So if you're not using it now, or if you're not using any hair tonic, get Wild Root Cream Oil at your drug or toilet goods counter in the new 25-cent Get Acquainted Size bottle. Also, ask your barber for a professional application of Wild Root Cream Oil Hair Tonic. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. Well, here it is, Sam. My, terribly confusing. I sensed that somehow. Who was that hit-and-run victim? Well, they named that dance after him, uh, George L. Bambuco. I don't believe it. <laughs> Sam, what does it mean? What does it mean? You know... A uh, gang after Glay? Snafu. Oh, why didn't you say so? <laughs> Dialects yet. <laughs> Good night, Sam. Good night, sweetheart. The Adventures of Sam Spade, Dashiell Hammett's famous private detective, are produced and directed by William Spear. Sam Spade is played by Howard Duff. Lorene Tuttle is Effie. The Adventures of Sam Spade are written for radio by Bob Tallman and Gil Dow. Musical direction is by Lud Gluskin with score composed by Renee Garagang. Join us again next Sunday when author Dashiell Hammett and producer William Spear join forces for another adventure with Sam Spade. Brought to you by Wild Root Cream Oil. Again and again, the choice of men who put good grooming first. This is Dick Joy reminding you to... Get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie. It keeps your hair in trim. You see, it's non-alcoholic, Charlie. It's made with soothing lanolin. You better get Wild Root Cream Oil, Charlie. Start using it today. You'll find that you will have a tough time, Charlie. Keeping all the gals away. Hiya, Baldy. Get Wild Root right away. Fifty thousand Americans die from tuberculosis every year. Yet tuberculosis is curable. The disease can be wiped out. The secret is discover it in its early stages. Why not be sure you and your family don't have tuberculosis by getting a chest x-ray right away? This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>